Kane. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It's not where you've been that counts, they say, but where you're going. But perhaps it's wise to stop once in a while and take a long look in both directions. That was indeed a giant step from Kitty Hawk to the moon. Not so great, however, as the leap from the universe of Isaac Newton to that of Albert Einstein. Professor Einstein, like Alice's rabbit, dropped us suddenly into a wonderland where space and time and weight have lost their ancient meaning. A topsy-turvy world of technical marvels. A world of limitless possibilities for good and evil. Our mystery drama, A Point in Time, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Mary Jane Higby and stars Paul Hecht and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores, and certainteed fiberglass attic insulation. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There is an unseen force that governs our lives. Time. But what is time? A period in which something happens? But suppose nothing happens. Ah, but something is always happening, you say. The earth turns, the tides flow. But look away from this tiny universe of ours. Science tells us there are black holes out in space where there is nothing. In those great gaps, what and where is time? It was musing of this sort, coupled with the most shocking event of his life, that brought Fred Mackey to this quiet room and the attention of two very concerned gentlemen. Now listen carefully, because this is the last time I'm going to repeat it, okay? Now here is all I know about what happened to Don Wakeman. It was getting on toward evening. We were tramping upstream, keeping as close as we could to the river. Don, as usual, was some distance ahead. I, I, I've never known a man with his thirst for adventure and his dogged persistence. Hey, hey, Don. Yeah? Uh, uh, this looks like a good place, doesn't it? Uh, uh, under, under this tree? Wait, you mean stop for the night already? Yeah, why not? But hey, we want to make the Colorado border tomorrow. Oh, look, I don't want to stumble around in the dark trying to make camp like last night, so let's knock off, okay? Well, look, I'd just like to see what's around this next curve. You know what's around there. More of what we're looking at right now. The river, a strip of grass, a few trees, low bluffs rising on both sides. Oh, come on, why do I always have to be the one to say stop? Don't you ever get tired? Okay, okay, we'll stop. Yeah, let's just uh, take a look at this map. Yeah. See, I figure we're just about uh, here. See, we passed this big rock with the two small ones balancing on top this morning. Uh, that's called the two sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, let's unload the gear, huh? Okay. Oh, wow. It's peaceful, isn't it? Yeah. Sure gets to you after a while, though. Well, uh, what do you mean? The quiet. It's too quiet. It's, it's eerie. Eerie? It's good for the nerves to get this far away from civilization. You realize we haven't heard another human voice for, oh, ten days. Well, frankly, I wouldn't mind hearing another voice about now. Ah, nonsense. There's nothing like the wilderness to help you get your head together again. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's good to get rid of that backpack. Hey, what, 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 where'd that come what, from? What, what was that, a shot? Oh, it sounded like mm, one. Strange. It's hunting season hasn't opened yet. Yeah, really. some guys don't worry too much about that <laughs> once they get this far away from the law. Hey, 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 Don, where, where, where are you going? Well, up the cliff. The, the sound came from up no, there. No, 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 Don, hold it. Well, what's the matter? You stick your head up over that bluff and you'll get it blown off. You know these amateur hunters, something moves, they shoot and ask questions later. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. So, sounded, like a, sounded like a car horn. <laughs> it couldn't be. Some kind of animal, maybe? No, no. Hey, it... it yeah... It is an automobile. That wasn't a shot. It must have been a backfire. No, no, that's impossible. No car could get through this terrain. Well, come on, let's find hey. out. Hey, hey, watch yourself. That's loose shale. It's okay. You can get a footing. Now watch it, Don. Uh, there's some roots and brush to hang on to. Uh, 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 oh. Yeah, I made it. 
Uh, good Lord. What is it? But it, there's a road up here. Gee, I'll be darned. How in the world did we miss this? Well, look, it, it runs right back where we came from. You, you can see those rocks, the two sisters. Yeah, well, well, why didn't we see the road this morning? It's, it's not on the map. I don't get it. Hey, uh, look, there's the car. Yeah. Behind the scrub oak. Look at that. It's a woman. Hey, look at the car. Look at that chick. She's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Hey, hey, hey watch out, miss. No, no, don't touch that radiator cap. Hey, you'll get burned. That's steam. Thank heaven. I was hoping somebody would hear my horn. Do you understand motors? Well, I, I never had a car like this one, but... Uh, hey, uh... Uh, that, that, that's a Packard, isn't it? Yes, Packard Roadster. About uh, 1922? 23, I'd say. Uh, and in mint condition. Boy, that's beautiful. But what's gone wrong with it? Well, look, the radiator boiled over. You, you'll have to give her time to cool off. Yeah, here, I, I'll raise the hood so the breeze can get at the engine. Well, that'll take a little while, which is uh, okay by me. It'll give us time to get acquainted. Um... I'm Don Wakeman. Uh, this is my friend, uh, Fred Mackey. Well, I can't wait. I've got to get back to town. Uh, town? <laughs> what town? Oh. Aren't you from the town? No. No, we're hikers. Hikers? Yeah, we're, we're on a walking trip. You mean you walked up here? All the way from Santa Fe. But that's miles. Yeah, that's for sure. And you walked? Why? Yeah, that's a good question. Ask him. He's the nature lover. <laughs> uh, uh, what town do you come from? Silver Strike. Silver Strike? Well, I never heard of it. It's not on the map, is it? Oh, it's just a small mining town. We're mighty proud of it, though. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of guys who come up here hunting every year, and nobody ever said anything about a town. Want to see it? Hop in. I'll take you. Well, nothing I'd like better, but you're going to have to wait for that engine to cool. No, I've got to get back immediately. Uh... Look, Fred, why don't we go down to the river and get some water for the radiator? No, you, you can't put cold water in there. You'll crack the block. We'll, we'll make a fire. We'll warm the water. Well, you'll come back, won't you? You won't leave me here alone. <laughs> you bet we'll be back. You'll like Silver Strike. It's a pretty town. Uh, if it's half as pretty as you are. Quit your kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. You're, um, you're really something. You're some chic yourself. I, but, what? Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, kiddo. <laughs> Hey, hey, what's the rush? What a beautiful chick. Would you take it easy? <laughs> She's not going anywhere. She can't, not until that engine cools. Hey, you know that's a fantastic antique, that car? It's mm -hmm. worth a lot of bread, you know. Imagine finding a magnificent creature like that out here in the middle of nowhere. Hey, Don. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know what she reminds me of? Uh, an old-time movie star, uh, uh, Clara Bow. You ever see a, you ever see a picture of Clara Bow? Yeah. I mean, didn't you notice that this girl looks... Just like her? Hey, you're right. She does. You know that figure and that yeah, hair? I've always been crazy <laughs> about red hair. <laughs> well, look, you gather up our stuff okay. while I heat the water. We are going to spend a couple of nights in Silver Strike. A couple of nights? Mm hmm I thought you were set on Colorado by tomorrow. Colorado can wait. But that girl, man, my fate is calling to me from a 1923 Packard Roadster. From the moment he laid eyes on that woman, Don Wakeman was doomed. Well, we finally got her car started. He jumped into the seat beside her. I struggled into the rumble seat with our camping gear. He never took his eyes off her face during the short drive. But when we got into Silver Strike, even Don sat up and took notice. Hey, what is this, a movie set? Where did all the Model T's come from? Hey, and that horse. With, with, with a milk wagon? Hey, how about that? An ice wagon. <laughs> hey, hey, look down there, Don. Yeah. A barber pole. And a cigar <laughs> store in here. Oh, hey, I get it. You're having a celebration. Ah, the bicentennial, right? What bicentennial? It, what bicentennial? You haven't heard of the bicentennial? No. Oh, come on. You can't be that far out of the action up here. Well, I guess we are a little bit out of things. Oh, that's my house. On the corner. Won't you come in? Well, I don't see why not. Uh, uh, uh Don, it's, it's getting a little late. I, uh, I don't think... Sit so. I'm coming. Where have you been? We were searching for you. The Don Roadster broke down. You went outside bounds on the first day, completely against regulations. And you took this pair with you. What unit are they from? They are not townspeople. You're not about the rules, Ella. Carl, these are visitors, not townspeople. Oh, Visitors. Well, welcome to Silver Strike. 
How did they manage to get up here? They walked all the way from Santa Fe. Well, I'll be doggone. I thought that would surprise you. You see, we don't get many visitors up here. Yeah, in the hunting season, I should think you would. Well, now, <clears throat> if you fellas walked all the way, uh, you must be about tuckered out. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. Come on inside. Now, look, it's, it's really getting late, and uh, we better be uh, going. Confidentially, I got something special in the way of liquid refreshment. Hey, you know what I mean? I, uh, I could do with a drink, Fred. Sure you could. <laughs> well, come on into the house. Now, this is none of your lousy bootleg hooch. I got the real thing. Bottled in bond. Fella smuggled it in from Mexico. Now, come right on in. Uh, you can just drop your backpacks here in the hall. Huh. Yeah. Uh, Zella, honey, uh, run out to the kitchen and fetch the bottle Jose brought back. Bring four glasses. <laughs> You've been a bad girl, but I reckon you can have a little snort, too. Hot dog. Be right back. <laughs> Silly little flapper. I guess I've spoiled her. Well, get, come into the parlor. Take the load off your feet. Oh, thanks. Uh, boy, am I bushed. Uh, you'll find Silver Strike a friendly town. Paul, I don't see it. Back of the shelf, hon. Uh, it's it kind of tough to get at. Reckon oh. I better go myself. <laughs> Top shelf, hon. Well, that is one strange pair. Hmm. You think he's her father or her husband? Yeah, it's hard to tell. It's funny, the, the, the way they talk, both of them. Yeah, like they're back in the 20s. Yeah, a couple of weirdos. Mm, now, wait a minute, I wouldn't say that. That Zella is a sexy little doll. Yeah. You know the town, it doesn't look real? I mean, it's like you said, a, a fake movie set. Uh, yeah. Dang, prohibition law. Maybe all right for them cookie pushers back east, but when a man's been working all day, he needs a drink. You, you, you still have prohibition? Yeah. It dries the bone. Well... Here's mud in your eye. Down the hatch. Here's to you, lovely lady. Liquid lightning. That's what they had in that bottle. Well, when my breath came back and my eyes cleared, Zella was smiling, her weird little smile, and Carl rambling on in his 1920s slang. I wanted to say something, but I, I couldn't get my head together. I, I was numb. Time stood still. Then Don slumped out of his chair. Carl laughed. He bent over Don, then turned to me, his breath hot on my face. <laughs> well, I took care of them for the time being. Well, now, Zella, my friend, you have some explaining to do. You want to do it now, or shall we liquidate our visitors first? <laughs> friends wandered into, a town time-locked in some mysterious way in the second decade of the century. One thing seems certain, Silver Strike is not the friendly town its citizens would have us believe it to be. We'll learn more when we return to Act Two. Far beyond Santa Fe, there is a sign. Silver Strike. Altitude 8,000 feet. Population 10,000. A casual visitor to the town might think he had slipped back into the early 1920s. The little boys wear knickerbockers and the little girls have bows in their hair. The prevailing mode of transport is the Model T. But the sign goes on to say, a friendly town. Fred Mackey would have quarreled with that description as he struggles to recover from an almost lethal Mickey Finn. I think it was the jackhammer in my head that finally brought me to. Every nerve in my body quivered and ached. The soft chime of a clock striking ten sent a shiver of pain through me. Moonlight streamed in the window and fell across Dawn, sprawled on the floor where that rotten booze had flung him. Through the closed door of the kitchen, I could hear voices hot with anger. No, you're not going to kill them. Not till I get the information I want. I know what you want out of them, and it's not information. 
This is the last time I accept a mission with a man-hungry female. Now, you look here. I share this command with you equally, and don't you forget it. You've disobeyed the External Security Agency. The manual distinctly says that... External Security has made a botch of this operation with their faulty information. I'm trying to save it. What faulty information? That is just the point. I don't know. But one thing is certain. Before we go ahead, we'd better find out. Ah, Buncom. Oh, you are such a fool. I don't know why they sent you on this expedition. Because you couldn't have got here without me. I'm the only chronologist who could chart the trip. Yes, you know time sequentials, and that's all you do know. This is a useless argument. No, please, Carl, listen to me. There's a big mistake of some kind, and we can find out from these men what it is. There is no mistake. I know there is. They spotted it the moment they got here. The town amused them. They laughed. <laughs> this was their last laugh. I intend to follow my orders, as given in the manual. Carl, we can't just blunder blindly ahead. I am going to follow orders, to the letter. I refuse. You refuse to carry out the mission? That's mutiny. Look, Carl, all I'm asking is a short delay to reassess the situation. Well, I suppose if you're going to be so pig-headed about it, but these men are not leaving here alive, and that's final. <laughs> managed to drag Don out into the hall. He was a dead weight. A bowl of white flowers gleamed in the moonlight near the door. I threw them on the floor and poured some of the water in his face. He stirred slightly. Don, come on, Don, wake up. We've got to get out of here. Don, I hate to do this, but... Come on, you got to come out of it. Stop that. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. Okay, okay, let's try something else. Ow! Get that out! Quiet, quiet. It's going to break my arm. I'll twist it off if you don't wake up. Now listen, listen to me. We've got to get out of here now. Okay, come on, get up. Get up. Yes, you can. Come on. Come on, up on your feet. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'll help you. All right, now lean on me. Lean on me. What's the idea? They're going to kill us. What? They are planning to kill us. Now, can you walk? Well, yeah. Okay, okay, come on. Come on. Here we go. What's this? Your knapsack. Oh. Come on, grab it and let's go. Well, where are we going? Back to the river. Come on. Find a motel. i got to lie down. I'm sick. We've got to get into hiding. Dan, they're going to spot us a mile away in this moonlight. Come on, come on, let's go over here. Over here in the shadow of the trees. Oh, wait. I better go to the police. I... No, I don't trust anybody. This whole setup, this whole town seems, seems phony to me. Uh, probably imagination. Don, if you don't pull yourself together and get tracking, so help me, I'm going to leave you. Now try, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's better. Uh... Here comes your car. You hit your eyes. Oh, come on. Stay, stay back here in the shadow. What's going on here? Oh, it's, it's nothing. My uh, friend's been sick. He's uh, he's all right now. Uh, thanks for stopping. Uh, we're okay. What are you fellas doing on the street this time of night? I oh, was just, just passing through town. Uh, we're backpackers. Backpackers? Yeah, it looks more like vagrants to me. Now, you hold everything till I come around and get a look at you. Yeah. Don't try to pull any fast ones. I got a gun on you. Sick, huh? Looks drunk to me. Hey, you, you the guy's been running the bad booze in here. I've been on the lookout for you. I'm the sheriff. Hey, uh, no, no, sheriff. Uh, we're, we're from Santa Fe. Uh, uh, here, we have identification. Uh, I'll show you. You are under arrest. Arrest? For, for what? For drunkenness, disorderly conduct, public nuisance. Oh, look, we, we, we're just walking quietly through town. Is, is there a law against that? This is a gun, mister. It says get in the car. Do you hear it? Perfectly. Come on, Don. You heard what the man said. <laughs> Sheriff's office. Bronson speaking. Oh, yeah, Carl, I picked them up all right. They're safe in the cooler. Oh, no, no, they didn't give me any trouble. None at all. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll wait till I hear from you. Right, Carl. Goodbye. Sheriff. Sheriff. Quiet back there. Sheriff, haven't you overlooked something? Hey, well, what's that? 
The small matter of our rights. I mean, you, you, you failed to tell me my rights. What rights? Well, for starters, Sheriff, I have a right to a phone call. I would like to talk to my lawyer in Santa Fe. We could hear you. I wouldn't argue so much if I was you. You lousy... Look, cool it, Fred. Look, this is a damned outrage. Shut up! That's the way we like things in Silver Strike. Nice and quiet. Now we're in a real jam. And that guy called. He really means to kill us, you know. Mm, he damn near did. What do you think he put in that booth? Now listen to me. Hmm? we got to get a couple of things straight around no, here. No, no, no. i got to lie down. You can't. Now look, this is important. They'll probably separate us for questioning. Don't give them any information. You understand? None. I must have been rat poison. Now look, Don, pull yourself together. Did you hear what I said? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Don't give them any information. Right. Because if you do, we're as good as dead. Now, the only reason we're alive now is because that woman thinks we know something. Something she wants to find out. So hopefully, hopefully we are safe till she does find out whatever it is. I don't think I can't follow all this. I gotta lie down. Look, they've made some kind of mistake. She thinks we know what it is. What she actually said was they spotted it the moment they drove into town. Now, let's think, Don. Let's think back. What, what what was it we spotted? Oh, I don't know. Uh, the kooky 1920s yeah, look? Yeah, yeah, they, they know all about that. I mean, did we say anything she didn't seem to know about? Well, no. We... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Yeah? The Bicentennial. That's right. She never heard of it. Yeah. But what puzzles me is that they talk like they really are in the 20s. Well, maybe they are. Maybe we've slipped back in time. What do you mean, slipped back? I saw this movie once about a fellow who slipped back 200 years. <laughs> yeah. All the women wore hoop skirts. Man, you must be hungover. Oh, no. A hangover would be a relief compared to this. You know, look, there's, there's got to be a perfectly natural explanation. Uh, and we'll find it out if we ask ourselves the right questions. Now, why uh, why would anybody want to put up a 1920 town up here in the wilderness? Huh? I don't know. Well, think. I can't. My head feels like it's been in a meat chopper. Try. <sighs> Tourist attraction? Up here? Why not? There's that guy moved London Bridge to the Arizona desert and yeah. tourists flock in by the thousands. Yeah, but but how would they get here? Mm, the road? Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about that road. Gravel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there wasn't a mark on it. Not a bump, not a rut. I'd swear that no vehicle had ever gone over it. And why didn't we see it when we climbed up by that, that big rock, uh, uh, Two Sisters? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, look around you. Here, I mean, does this cell look right to you? Well, I'll tell you, the bunk looks good. I gotta lie down, Fred. I mean, it all looks new. Uh, I bet we're the only people ever been in here. I mean, you're right. It's like a bad movie set. Uh, the people, they, they, they seem unreal somehow. Mm, not Zella. She's a sexy little doll, if I ever saw her. Even Zella seems uh, strange, out of this world. Okay, okay. So she's from Mars. They're all from Mars. Now, that is my last word. Now, will you let me lie down and quietly die? Mars, Mars. From Mars. Oh, from Mars. Man, you're in worse shape than I am, if you think I meant that. Now, spaced out, I may be, but I still don't go for flying saucers. <laughs> Don stretched out on one of the cots and passed right out again. The fatigue and the hangover finally got to me, too, and I had to lie down. I didn't wake up until late afternoon, and when I did, I rolled over, looked around, and I sat up with a start. Don was gone. Don! Don! Sheriff! Quiet! Sheriff, where's my friend? Quiet! Back Sheriff, there, Sheriff, there. come here. Quiet now! They can hear you out on the street. Now, what's eating you? Where's my friend? Well, your friend, he left. Yeah, I can see that. Where is he? Well, now, I don't recollect him leaving no forward in that but how, how did he get out? He walked. You mean he just opened the cell door and he walked out? Well, that's about the size of it. Okay, okay, well, then let, let me out then, too. Oh, sorry. Well, you won't let me out, huh? That's about the size of it. Why not? I ain't had no orders let you out. Well, who gave the orders to let him out? A lady come down here with an order from the mayor. They left... They left together? That's about the size of it. That was when I began to lose hope. 
Don never could resist a pretty woman. And I'd never seen him as hot as he was over this Zella. If she got him alone for 20 minutes, I felt sure she could get anything she wanted out of him. It was two and a half days before I saw him again. Open up, Sheriff. He's coming with me. Don! Where the devil have you been? Here, Sheriff. Here's the order. You'll see it's okay. Yeah, it seems in order, all right. Well, my friend, you're a free man. Here's your knapsack. Everything's there. You uh, better check it for yourself, though. Don, Don, what's been going on, eh? So long, folks. Don't you take no wooden nickels. Hey, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you in this town for everything you've got. False arrest. <laughs> Tell it to the Marines. Yeah, I'd like to push those ugly teeth down his throat. Hey, hey, take it easy. Where have you been? I've been with Zella. Yeah, I gathered that. I suppose you've told her everything you know? No, nope, I've told her nothing. <laughs> yes. Now, look, you're wrong about Zella. She's the most... Well, the most gentle, the most tender woman I've ever known. Oh, man, I was afraid of this. You and I have got to have a serious and a calm talk. Okay, but let's get out of this pest hole of a town first. We can't. We can't get out. What do you mean we can't get out? It's no use. What's going to stop us? A lot of things. The security here is not to be believed. Now, this is going to be hard for you to grasp. It was, well, it was hard for me at first. You were right about Silver Strike. This town is only three days old. What? It's an invasion base. I don't get it. What are you talking about? Infiltration from another planet. What? It's true. These people are all part of an invasion force like, uh, well, like commandos from outer space. You're kidding. No. They are going to take over the Earth. And they can do it without firing a shot. <laughs> See, they have orders not to scorch the land. They need it. They've exhausted the resources of their own planet and five others besides. They are going to take over the Earth... And plow it under for farmland. An invasion from outer space? I hasten to remind you that we have only Fred Mackey's word for what happened that day in the remoteness of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. But, invaders or not, the citizens of Silver Strike are clearly up to no good. What their intentions really are, we will learn when I return with Act Three. Two lone hikers in the mountains not far from the rise of the Rio Grande, have stumbled into a town redolent of the atmosphere of the early 20s. To Fred Mackey, the inhabitants resemble the characters in a silent movie. But his friend Don Wakeman insists they are invaders from outer space. It's inevitable, Fred. They're going to conquer the world, and swiftly. You are asking me to believe that... <laughs> This yokel of the sheriff and that idiot Carl are really spacemen from a flying saucer? Of course not. They don't use vehicles. They haven't for centuries. Well, then how did they get here? Space compression. Space compression? Yeah. Look, there's, there's a lot of space inside the atom, you know? It's, it's mostly space. Well, they prefabricated a town like Silver Strike, compress the component atoms, and reduce it with all its inhabitants to a speck of energy. Then... They send it out on a beam. A beam? A beam that travels many times the speed of light to any point in the universe. Yeah, and then I suppose they pull the atoms back up again? Exactly. Oh, look, that woman is kidding you. This is ridiculous. Take a look around you. They're stupid. They're, 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 they're like hillbillies. That Carl, he's completely ape. Yeah, well, Zell agrees with it about him. She says he's basically dull-witted, but he's a trained chronologist. What in the world is that? A time navigator. You see, when you travel through space, you travel through time, too. It... it well, it's very involved. Oh, come on. You know what I think we've stumbled into? Some kind of kook commune. Oh. I told Zell I wouldn't get anywhere with you. One last time, Fred. Yeah. This is it. You understand me? This is it. The end of our civilization. We can't fight it. The technology of these people is, is, is centuries ahead of ours. Where did she say they came from? A planet called Agantha. Agantha? Yeah, yeah. It's in another galaxy. To them, Earth looks like a lovely little greenhouse. 
You see, they've exhausted Agantha's resources. We are the two luckiest men on earth, you know. Thanks to Zella. Well, how do you figure that? They need us. See, their advanced intelligence agents have failed them somehow, at least Zella thinks they have, and she's afraid to proceed without better information. If we cooperate, they'll make us technical advisors, officers in their army. Otherwise... Yeah, otherwise? Carl wants to blot us out. Instantly, without leaving a trace. You really believe this? Huh? I believe what I saw! All right, all right. Now, 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 wait a minute. If they're from another planet, how come they talk like Americans, Well, huh? they've been planning this operation for years. They've been trained for it since childhood. All right. But then why the 1920 masquerade? I don't know. Yeah. Well, fortunately for us, the operation got fouled up somehow. Somebody goofed. Do you, I mean, do you know what you're saying? We've run into a huge, <laughs> a cosmic snafu. Okay, well, let them figure the way out of it. They're getting no help from me. John, honey? Oh, uh, hi, Zella. Well, did you have a good talk? Hello, Freddy. Feel better, kiddo? I brought you a root beer. Yeah, I had one drink with you. I haven't recovered. Thank you. Oh, that was Carl's idea. He's a bungler. I hated to have him included in this mission, but we had to have a time navigator. I handled the space trajectory myself, and I'm proud of what I did, not 15 miles off, but the time projection is tricky, too. So, we have to put up with that dumbbell, Carl. Now, what we want out of you boys is simple. Just tell me what it was about this town that struck you as off-key. Oh, uh, no. No, no, I'm not telling you anything. All right, you'll get that straight right now. Neither is my friend here, if I have anything to say about it. John, darling, I, I'd hoped you'd explain to him. Freddie, listen, I'm trying to save your lives. Tell me, why doesn't Silver Strike look like your average American town? It must be the time element, Zella, of the 1920s. All right, Zella. What have they told you? Look! Look up there! What? In the sky! What is that thing? What it looks like. A flying ship. But it's huge! What is it? Is it an Earth ship? Yeah. It's a jet, all right. Jet? Yeah. Jet propelled airplane. Jet propelled. Carl, did you hear that? There's your proof. Earth has only small cockpit planes, hardly bigger than automobiles. That's what we were told, isn't it? Yes, but... And look, look up there. Now can you see that something's wrong? Advanced intelligence told us nothing of aircraft of that size. Son, what did you say about the 1920s look? Well, the, the Model T Fords, all the horses... What is the, the date? The date? Well, it's the fifth or sixth. I'm not sure. No, the year. The year. The year? Well, it's 1976. 1976? No, it can't be. 1976. Well, that puts another light on things, doesn't it, Carl? The Advance Information Agency didn't fail us. You did. You. You bungler, you fool. This is all your fault. Uh, Zella, I can explain. You had charge of the time schedule. You brought us in 50 years late. I don't see how I could have. What will we do, Zeta? We'll have to abandon our plans and get back to Agampa immediately. Yeah, they must be wondering what happened to you. We can't salvage this operation. Carl, alert the members of the expedition. We leave Earth within 12 hours. What shall I do with this pair? Don, darling, you're coming with me, aren't you? You know I am, Zella. Any, any time, any place. Don, no. Now, come on, wake up, man. You can't do this. I am going to go with the woman I love. We'd better take them both with us. We'd better have something to show on Agatha for all the money we spent on this expedition. Otherwise, they'll tear us apart. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're not taking me back. No way. It's your only hope for survival, Fred. They're bound to win. Now, Think. We'll be the first, the only Earthmen to reach out beyond the stars to see what lies beyond the Milky Way. I don't want to see beyond the stars. And I sure don't want to be reduced to a speck and shot out into space with, with, with Carl in control. Okay. I use the ion redactor on him. No. No, no. Uh, let, let him go. Please. Zella. I can't do that, Don. Zella, if you destroy him, you'll have to kill both of us. Son, it's impossible. I'm sorry. You know how I feel about you, Zella, but I can't stand by and watch you kill my friend. Just, just free him. Let him go, and I'll come with you. I can't free him. We can't leave him here to spread rumors to warn the Earth people. Let him talk all he pleases. Nobody will believe him. I promise you, nobody will ever believe him. And nobody has believed me so far. Oh, I understand why. 
The region has been thoroughly explored, and there's no evidence of a town ever having been there. No sign of burned ground from a blast off either. But you see, you see, it wasn't like that. There, there was no blast off. When they were ready to go, John and Zella walked with me to the edge of town. Don't look back. The light will be too intense for your eyes. Don? Don, you sure you won't change your mind? I'm standing on the brink of the greatest adventure of the ages. Nothing in the world could make me turn back. We'll be back in less than a year. We never give up. And when we come back, I'll get to you first, Fred. I'm going to save you in spite of yourself. So long. And good luck. You're going to need it. You say there was no sign of the town ever having been there? No, Doctor. Well, it's the same story you told me nearly a year ago when you first came down out of the mountains. Well, I was badly shaken by the experience. But, Doctor, as you can see, I am perfectly well now. I... I'm ready to go home. Uh, well, now, we think uh, we're certain and that you'll feel even more secure in your recovery if you take a longer period in a stress-free environment. Uh, no, no, Doctor, I, I, I don't need it. I really uh, don't need it. We've located a splendid place, Mirror Lake. It's run by Dr. Cumberland. No. Excellent therapist. Uh, no, my, my, my nerves are as steady as yours. There's a man here from Mirror Lake. Look, look, never mind, Doctor. I, I, I'm I, fed up. Look, do, do you hear me? I've, I've had it with you people. And that's station no. transportation. No, I, I, I'm not going. I'm not going. No. Uh, Dr. Siddeley, uh, patient transportation service. The receptionist told us to come right up. Yes, yes, yes come in. I'm uh, Al Freeman, Doctor. Tom. Tom, I... You've come back. This is the patient? Doctor, here's my proof. Here's my proof. This is Don Wakeman. No, Mr. Mackey, this is Mr. Freeman. Uh, this is Miss Michaels. How do you do? It's, it's, it is her. It's the woman. Uh, from, from again? Zella. I, I told you. Oh, it's too bad. He's been perfectly lucid until now. You uh, have the impression we've met before, Mr. Mackey? Yeah, yes. Well, we've come to take you with us. You, you, you've come to... Take me with you? Yes. To a very nice place. Oh. Are you ready to go? (laughs) Yeah. Sure. Sure, I'm ready to go. Well, splendid. Yeah, I'll go. Goodbye. Uh, Goodbye, Dr. Sinner. Just just a moment. There are some papers that must be signed. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, Give me a pen, eh? Here you are. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mackey, I'm sure you'll be glad you made this decision. Keep in touch with us. We're interested in your progress. I hope you'll let us hear from you. Oh, you'll hear from us, all right. That's for sure. You'll hear from us sooner than you think. An immediate invasion from outer space. Well, now, with all its recent probing, science has yet to receive the slightest indication of sentient beings out there. But before you go to sleep tonight, consider this fact. Within the area of the sky known as the bowl of the Big Dipper, within that area alone, there are discernible two million billion stars. Can you believe that in all that vast array of worlds there is nobody? I'll be back shortly. If there's a moral in Fred Mackey's story, it must be this. Science provides us every day with greater technical marvels, but technology can't offer the wisdom or intelligence to use them properly. For that, perhaps we must look to older and more profound disciplines. Some 5,000 years ago, 
we were given ten precepts, which, carried out to the letter, would bring us into accord with nature and our fellow beings. And that would indeed be a giant step, greater by far than the leap from Kitty Hawk to the moon. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Russell Horton, Terry Keene, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding program furnished by CBS Radio. This